Hello, everyone, and welcome to another wonderful Find My Past Friday. We're here live coming to you wherever you are in the world, and it's lovely to see you all to talk about this week's latest records and, of course, to talk about family history in general. So we've got some very exciting things to talk about as ever, and I'm really excited to hear about the things that you've been up to as well. So do let us know, talk in the comments. You're here to talk to each other as well as me. So um, we have a wonderful community and we'd love to hear more uh, about uh, everything else that you've been doing too. And of course, it's a very special uh, week because we have, of course, a few anniversaries. And uh, particularly, we have, of course, Anzac Day uh, very soon. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit shortly. Uh, so uh, let's see who is with us at the moment. I see people saying hello. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Karen. Hi, Anya. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Rosie, Amanda, uh, Ellen, Sue, uh, Mobo, Angeal, Joe, Daphne. I see a lot of you saying it's quite sunny, it's cold, it's grey, uh, all the ranges of weather that we can imagine. And uh, it's very bright here in Edinburgh, so uh, we've not got any cold weather yet, but uh, I say touch wood because, of course, I do live in Britain, and uh, who knows what may come any day, and uh, it's very dangerous to say anything else. See people from, yes, all over the world, Somerset, Iowa, Canada, uh, and uh, Victoria said exactly what I'm thinking. Happy Friday, that's it, that's what we are. And uh, we have Alex Cox in the comments, and he's saying as well, we have a great new collection for Anzac Ancestors this week, which we'll talk about very shortly. Uh, very exciting for everyone. So it looks like we're all bedding in. Uh, Amanda said, very typical British weather, in other words. That's very true. And uh, we had another question of the week as well, which I'm going to play around with too. So first of all, let's talk about this week's new records. We're the only website that releases records every single week. And those records may be exactly what you need to find those ancestors. And because uh, Anzac Day is around the corner, we have some Australian military records and are very, very useful for anyone who's commemorating Anzac Day. And uh, these are a combination of different sources put together to make one pot that you can look and you can find all that you need to commemorate those fallen heroes. Uh, this is the Australia Military Commemorative Roles and Roles of Honour. And so it's a very large resource, lots and lots of details, uh, it covers a, a lot of facts and figures, a lot of uh, things like physical descriptions, names, uh, next of kin, where people are from, dates of death, dates of birth, uh, a lot of detail in there. And it also contains a number of images. And those images will give you things like um, the inscriptions that were chosen for their memorials and uh, where they're commemorated in the national um, memorial in Australia as well. So very interesting, very useful set, uh, especially as we come towards that important day and um, the uh, things that went on there. And um, of course, uh, Gallipoli uh, is one of those um, large uh, events that we in Britain don't really learn enough about. I really encourage you to take a look at the campaigns of the Mesopotamia and um, the Middle East and uh, Turkey uh, or the Ottoman Empire at the time as it was and uh, to read a little bit more about the uh, plight of the Anzacs because they really really fought very hard and we don't hear enough about them. The same with Canadian forces at places like Vimy Ridge in Belgium and uh, other uh, allied Commonwealth forces um, in, in Britain, at least, we, we don't hear enough or, or tell their stories as much as we should. And it's something that we could talk an entire presentation about and maybe um, have a, a, a little uh, comment in there if, if one day you want to hear about that. But uh, I know we have a special Anzac presentation on the way, which will help to tell you a bit more about that story. But um, these sacrifices shouldn't be understated and uh, it's very important to learn as much as we can about different things i see uh haha uh sandra is saying i think we're distant cousins the whiskers yes i have whiskers every single presentation i have a new cousin what is going on this is <laughs> if we keep going I, I my christmas card list is is i'm going to be bankrupted i'm afraid this is <laughs> It wouldn't be a Find My Past Friday without a new cousin. How, <laughs> how great is all of this? Um, yes, um, what what a, a, a Friday. Um, so uh, back to our, our records. We've got new uh, parish records as well. We've got the, the largest collection of parish records online. Uh, new ones from Kent. Six parishes. Halling, St. John the Baptist. Who? St. Werburgh. 
Uh, Horton Kirby, St. Mary, Luddersdown Laywood School, Luddersdown St. Peter and Paul, and Milton Next Gravesend Christchurch. Uh, a Kent Parish Records collection is unrivaled. Massive collection from all corners of uh, the Garden of England. So do take a look at our parish list and see what's there, because you would definitely find some relatives here uh, in that collection if you've got Kentish roots. Then our newspapers which we could never go far without talking about those newspapers. And we've added some really good papers this week and some great additions to the papers that exist. So we've got The Beehive, which is an interesting title, 1862 to 1875 and 1877 to 1878. The Birmingham Suburban Times, 1888 and 1897. The Colville Times, 1893 to 1895, 1898 and 1900 to 1914. So a little bit from the Midlands there. The Flintshire Observer, 1898 and 1900 to 1903. We did mention a little bit about theatre and music on Wednesday, but the Illustrated Sporting News and Theatrical and Music Review uh, covers 1862, 1865 to 1867, 1869 to 1870. Kilmarnock Scott, uh, Standard, for those of you up north, uh, 1892. Uh, Llanelli and County Guardian and South Wales Advertiser, 1869 to 1908. Really big span there. Northwest Evening Mail, 1911. The Tainmouth Post and Gazette from 1886 to 1904. And then some expansions to the Alliance News, the Barrow Herald and Furness Advertiser, Ben Briley's Journal, Birkenhead News, Bradford Advertiser, Bromyard News, Cavern Weekly News and General Advertiser, the Cork Daily Herald, the East London Observer, the Eastbourne Chronicle, the Fleetwood Chronicle, the Football News of Nottingham, the Halifax Comet, the Hearts and Essex Observer, the Jersey Evening Post, that's one I'll be looking at, uh, John Bull, Kokodi Times, uh, Liverpool Courier and Commercial Advertiser, the Manchester Daily Examiner and Times, the Mayo Examiner and West of Ireland Agricultural and Commercial Reporter and Advertiser, that's a monolithic title, the Nelson Chronicle, Colne Observer and Clitheroe Division News, the Northern Weekly Gazette, the Oxford Chronicle and Reading Gazette, the Pontefract Advertiser, the Potteries Examiner, the Reading Standard, the Runcorn Examiner, Seren Kimru, which I'm sure is a Welsh title, uh, Southeastern Gazette, um, the uh, S uh, St. Helens Examiner, the Star of Gwent, Stockton Herald, South Durham and Cleveland Advertiser, the Halesworth Times and East Suffolk Advertiser, the Tower Hamlets Independent and East End Local Advertiser, I'm almost at the end, I promise, and the Wisbech Chronicle General Advertiser and Lynn News. That is a massive collection of different journalists' uh, efforts, different publications covering all four corners of the British Isles, Ireland, Wales, Scotland and England and lots and lots of counties too. So many papers as has been seen and this happens every week and don't forget as well I've mentioned lots of places, lots of newspapers that cover certain areas but stories if they're worth reading, they're worth sharing and they're worth writing about they appear in all kinds of newspapers because they've been syndicated. And that means that you'll find your ancestors from Dumfries in newspapers in Kent. You'll find your ancestors from Kent in newspapers in Lincoln. You'll find your ancestors from Lincoln in newspapers in Dublin. Look at them all. Look with your names. Look with locations. Don't just focus on the local newspapers. Local newspapers are great, but don't be disheartened if this week isn't your week for the exact paper. You still might well find that great resource and that great new find because that's what newspapers are. It's just packed full of stories and every week you should take another look perhaps. I do the same search roughly once a month just to see if anything news appeared and I do every once in a while get uh, a good new thing and it's very rarely in that local paper because of the fact that people are talking much further afield about my family perhaps or someone else's family because they did something of note or of interest or perhaps someone local was involved who may have traveled and when you've got two people from two different places you'll find it listed in both newspapers quite often so there are lots of things to look for uh, mary mckee did a really great presentation about newspapers relatively recently worth taking a look at as well if you need some newspaper tips because there are now over 42 million newspaper pages on farm my past and it's an amazing resource. We could talk all day about that, but I don't want to um, keep you until uh, dinner time. And we've got much more to cover as well. So uh, really, really exciting. And uh, you see, Amanda said here, don't give up hope. New records are being added online all the time. Might take a while, but you never know when that vital record will pop up to help you. And that's really true, Amanda. Every week, there's someone else's relative has appeared, perhaps for the first time online. Uh, these Kent Parish records, for example. Imagine if that's your parish this week and you now have everything you need to go back. You know, maybe 
generations and generations. And that's what we're excited about. So uh, this is what we're hoping everyone will experience at some point. I've had the same thing when a local newspaper to me came up and I found result after result really, really quickly. A collection of parish registers in Staffordshire. Suddenly, whoosh, all of my Darlaston ancestors and things appear and I could go back a few hundred years. It's brilliant when it happens, but it keeps happening. So when it's not you this week, it doesn't say it might not be you next week or the week after. That's why it's great to keep joining us, keep being subscribed to that newsletter and keep finding out what the new records are. Because if you're not subscribed, maybe next week is the time you might have to because there might be something really good coming or something along those lines. I can name a lot of things that we're working on that I know you going to like and i know i can't speak about them but very soon we're going to be really really enjoying some of these great new discoveries so uh, do keep up hope and uh, there's nothing uh, too much to worry about if you can't find something yet because there are so many more records that aren't online and so many records that aren't on find my past so there are more coming all the time it is getting easier um we then just have to use our clever interpretive brain and try and interrogate all these things and put them all together in a nice way so I'm um, seeing everyone talking as we go through. We see Andrew saying last week's newspapers turned up an unexpected nugget. His mum's grandfather had been sentenced to 14 days in prison in 1882 when age 11. Wow, what a story there, Andrew. And uh, you should hopefully have looked at our crime prisons and punishments collection and you might then find some court documents and they might tell you a little bit more as well. So whenever you get a piece of a puzzle, start and apply it to all of these other pieces as well. Try and make a, a bit of a chain of progression. And we've got so many other records that might help. You might even be able to find a photograph. And that would be really exciting, wouldn't it? So fingers crossed there. And uh, Sylvia's just found a vaccination court case in the new Kilmarnock paper. They're off down the rabbit hole. Well, uh, maybe if you can wait until five, then uh, you can stay with us until the end. But you'd be forgiven if you uh, are so excited that you're doing that at the same time. Uh, I see Linda's asking when I did the newspapers, did I breathe? I did a little, but uh, no, I'm uh, very used to rattling off all of these newspapers because every week there are so many new ones. This happens to be a bit of a bonanza, uh, but uh, this happens more than once. So I'm uh, getting used to being able to do that. And uh, I'm waiting for that time that uh, we uh, have too many for me to do, but uh, I'm sure that's coming because there are so many coming as well. Lloyd has mentioned with our ANZAC records, an ANZAC record corrected a South African military record. The details on the former are fantastic to the point I solved the mystery of a second cousin. They belong to me on one side and a friend on another line. But I'll have to write it up someday. We'll definitely like to read that. That sounds really interesting. That's great. So uh, that's uh, it's really, really fascinating to see all these records again, helping people and uh, seeing how we go. And I mentioned the question of the week. I see some people coming through with uh, their answers to the question of the week. And so uh, we're going to do something clever with this. I'm going to throw them out and we're going to spread them out a little bit rather than going all at once. But what I'm going to do, as we can see uh, the uh, responses that you give when you press like or anything like that, then uh, I'm going to read out a few of them as we go along. And if you like it, then uh, give it a thumbs up and we'll see which one gets the most. And you don't have to have one vote. You can say any ones you like, and then I'm sure perhaps I think Alex might be able to see a little bit more than I can, but we can definitely see um, the responses for these different uh, uh, present these, these different uh, comments. So the question was, what do we call a collective of genealogists? What would the noun be? Because there isn't one officially. Let's see if we can think one up and see if we can start one off. And there have been some really good suggestions. So I'm uh, hoping uh, maybe that we might be able to solve this problem once and for all. I know we never will because we're genealogists and we always have to look at all the evidence and make sure everything lines up. But at least maybe in our side, we could <laughs> we, we could give ourselves a little bit of peace. Uh, so let's take a look at some that people have suggested in this. So Anya has suggested a forestry of genealogists. So I quite like that. That's quite good. I would be giving a thumbs up if I could from this side. But that's good. A forestry of genealogists. Well, family trees are important. And uh, of course, if you can't see the wood for the family trees, uh, that is one thing. So uh, forestry, I like that one a lot. Uh, Georgia has suggested a gene pool of genealogists. <laughs> that's quite clever. Uh, so, well, DNA is very important. So a gene pool, that's quite good, isn't it? A gene pool. So um, then let's see what else we've got. We've got some more. Um, oh, Ellen's uh, very uh, old school there and, and had a school of genealogists because every day for a genealogist, of course, is an education, uh, either it's in our own relatives or if it's in... Uh, the, the processes that we do. So that's quite a good one as well, a school of genealogists. And on the same path, 
Nini has said, what about an archive of genealogists? <laughs> well, an archive is where you put all of the records. So maybe it is where you put all of the genealogists as well. That's quite clever. So definitely, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to looking back and seeing all of these likes. And maybe Alex can see and see which one is, is more popular. Uh, oh, uh, Patricia's got uh, a madness of genealogists. And <laughs> it can drive you pretty mad, can't it? So can see that one and uh, i think when we bang against that brick wall time and time again then uh, that uh, madness becomes even more of a thing and uh, we're all definitely eccentric i think and um, a gatekeeper of genealogists is a good one from daphne a gatekeeper i like that one as well so you're all very very creative when it comes to this and that's really great um a nosy, a nosy Parkers, that's what you call them. <laughs> that's quite good as well. Um, I think that's more of a more of a, a description than a, than a collective. But yes, we are all nosy. We're the people that had to see how things worked and had to do all that kind of thing, I'm sure. And uh, we can't leave a good mystery unsolved. So that's something we all have in common. Elsa Churchill's got a good one. An enthusiasm of genealogists. I like that as well. That's very clever. Enthusiasm of genealogists. And um, I see um, Beth has had here um, a forest of genealogists because we're trackers and stalkers of the dead. A forest is good. I like the tree connection. And I see as well, Claire said seeds of life. That's quite a deep one, that. quite a, an, an emotive one. There. It's seeds of life. I like that one as well. So that's good. And I can see lots and lots of likes coming through. So I see some of you are definitely um, voting on your favorites and things. So hopefully, yes. So uh, Alex can see which ones are very, very popular and you can let us know. Um, Anne said an obsession of genealogists. Now, that's definitely a, a one that I uh, uh, can feel. An obsession is quite one, isn't it? That's uh, that's one I think an obsession is a very good one. And uh, Linda's got a, a good one for uh, a question. We, uh, Sherlock of genealogists. That is very good. I like Sherlock as well as uh, one and Amanda. In the same vein, I think, with our investigative things, she's called us sleep-deprived souls. <laughs> That's also very true, and um, that's uh, definitely something that doesn't get better when we keep releasing all these records, because when there are new records to look at, then that just gets leapt on, and the amount of times it's been, ooh, silly o'clock in the morning, I'm still going because I'm just one record away. Have you felt that? That happens so often. And um, a pool of genies, that's a good one from David, a pool, it's like a gene pool, you see, I like that, that's clever. And um, uh, Rosie said that they're quite liking an obsession of genealogists. That is good. That is, uh, I like that one. Kathy's got um, a proof of genealogists. That's good. A proof. I'm sure a proof is um, another collective noun for something else. And I remember that. And uh, that's a good one. Um, Marion said um, curiosity of genealogists. And that's good too. That's, that's uh, I like curiosity. And uh, Alex with his. Uh, this is him doing the count here in the, the comments. And Nosy Parker's from Victoria is doing quite well. And uh, I don't know which genealogist you've met, uh, but a gyration of genealogists. Um, I, I haven't seen much of that going on at uh, any of the family history conferences I've been to, but uh, definitely um, that's, that's one word you could use. Um, Peter said a, a geriatrics of genealogists. Well, um, I'm always a fan of a Latin word, a geriatrix, that's one, and that's uh, quite an interesting one. And um, Jackie also likes obsession, that's another one, obsession of genealogists. So that, that seems to be one that a lot of people are suggesting. Um, a gaggle of genealogists, that's good. Uh, that's, uh, is it geese that are a gaggle as well? I'm not sure, I, I think maybe. One of my favourite collective nouns I like is, uh, if you know the, the, the pugs, the dogs, the small dogs, which uh, I, I have a, a little bit of a... Uh, affection for for seeing them uh, as, as strange and funny as they always look is um, a grumble of pugs and when you see them and you hear them breathing then you, you can definitely see why they're called that but uh, i like those strange names and uh, karen said that we should be called the sleep inducers <laughs> Yes, yeah, so to other people, for us, it's the most exciting thing in the world, and that's that's what's good. And uh, so, uh, sleep induces for others, not for ourselves. That's one thing to, to to clarify. I would make sure we didn't put ourselves to sleep, but that's a good one as well. A generation of genealogists. That's a good one, Sue. I like that one. That's uh, one there that might hopefully do well. Um, a frustration of genealogists. Oh, Karen. Yes, a frustration. That's one. Yes. Ah. <laughs> And there's so many of these coming through as well. I thought we'd do spread this out, but uh, a quandary. I like that one, Alison, as well. A quandary. That's uh, something we definitely come up to in family history. Um, the uh, finders of skeletons and black sheep. I'd like that on a business card, I think. I think that would be quite a good one to describe. Um, 
Eileen said a pastime of genealogists. That's a good one as well, pastime. Um, Claire has asked, uh, where's my inheritance from my grandfather underground? I mean, uh, possibly, that's one thing. When you're doing your family history, using wills and probate and things like that, it's the only way to find out. And uh, perhaps there is some uh, special inheritance waiting for you. But of course, the best inheritance that you can think of um, is the stories that you get. Um, it's not really uh, one of those things that we'll, we'll all find that castle that was lost in a card game that we can claim back or anything like that, that we, we hear about all the time. But when you start doing family history, you inherit something cooler than money. I would say cooler than money. Money's all right. But uh, the stories and the great things that inspire you and make you excited and give you a sense of belonging and purpose, I think, are are, are worth more than you can put into to coins and pounds and, and dollars and everything else. So it's still really, really exciting, even if you don't get that castle. And we would all like a castle. That would be nice. And uh, maybe one day. But I think in the meantime, those stories are still pretty good. And the more we find, the more exciting that can get. And uh, Sue has said a warren of genealogists for those who go down the rabbit hole. I like that as well, Sue. That's good. So remember, uh, like if you uh, enjoy a particular one, you don't have to vote for one. You can vote for as many as you want. And Alex is keeping a bit of a track and see what uh, what goes on. Um, Beth has had another suggestion, remembrance of genealogists. That's quite good. Very poignant, that one. I like that one as well. Uh, Fia said, yes, geese is gaggle. So I'm, I'm not going too mad just yet. That's uh, exciting. I think as the sun starts to uh, creep in in the summer, then uh, my brain goes a little bit funny. So I am uh, hoping to keep up with all of these things to remember that there are so many things. A squadra of genealogists. That is interesting. That's uh, one, one that's uh, quite good. I like that one, Victoria. And uh, Roxanne likes obsession as well. It seems obsession is quite a good one. And <laughs> you still has been called grumble a few times over the years. <laughs> you and me both, Anya. Um, census from rosary a census of genealogists oh, that's a very very um pertinent one isn't it that's quite an interesting one <laughs> so the brick wall smashes sounds like a television program doesn't it you might watch on a saturday morning i don't know if it'll be animated but <laughs> that's one a good one karen um a branch of genealogists from claire and that's a nice one i like the ones that have a connection to the family tree or to records or things i think there's something nice about that i think it's quite great and um uh, Amanda said as well, the Eureka Enthusiasts. I mean, that uh, sounds like a, a great uh, collection of uh, uh, people who uh, uh, work through those brick walls. That's a nice one. I like uh, a pedigree of genealogists. So that's another good suggestion from Beth. And John has one that uh, maybe some of you uh, may not know the word, an, an Achnentafel of genealogists. So uh, as uh, we'll go through and uh, Let's see, anyone uh, want to explain what that is or should I go? Uh, but uh, it's a, a great word to uh, understand. It's the description of your ancestors. It's a, uh, a table of your ancestors, which we can use. And that's the, uh, the way to uh, describe your uh, um, heritage. So that's one uh, interesting word to remember and to keep up because uh, that's one that as a genius, you will come into contact with a fair bit. And uh, Rosie said, yeah, hands up who's burnt the dinner while they just finished following this record. That happened to me only two days ago. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> happens all the time. I'm working on um, a particular person's family tree at the moment for something that we're doing. And uh, you, it all will become clear at some point in the future. But he has a fascinating story, which is something that I don't think even he knows about. And we're, we're looking forward to revealing that to him, uh, involving opposite sides of uh, a very uh, large event in uh, British history, and um, he, he's one ancestor may have uh, uh, come to blows with his other ancestor, which is an interesting story. Uh, Cindy said an atom of genealogists. That's quite interesting. I like that one. And uh, to Anya said as well, when we go around cemeteries, we call it our grave adventures. <laughs> I feel like um, Fridays, I like the fact that there are all of these different people who uh, work at Farmer Past who have this, this great passion for family history. And we all have the Friday session where it's less focused on a particular topic and we can take it in all these different directions. And it always goes in different directions, doesn't it? And I love a good pun. I'm happy with a good pun. I'm excited. This is a great question of the week, I think. I'm really excited. Um, you see all these different inspirations and the things that make us excited and the things that can lead us in these different directions. And uh, you might have a, a favorite or you might like all of us. Um, I like all of us, obviously. Um, 
because I'm biased, but um, definitely it's exciting to see every week uh, these different takes on different things and uh, to just gather together because I'm sure we've made some friends in the comments as well. And it's great that we all come together in this way. And uh, so I look forward to our monthly gatherings here, but I also definitely tune in to see Alex and Jen and Mary and other people as well uh, doing their sessions and doing their weekly Fridays as well, because uh, it's always interesting, exciting to see those different spins on different things as well. And uh, we see a murmuration of genealogists from Eileen. That's a good one. I like a murmuration. <laughs> um, that's uh, so uh, uh, Alex has said a frustration of genealogists from Karen Jones is in the lead so far. Frustration is definitely one. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Um, and Nini said an unraveling of genealogists. I hope genealogy isn't your unraveling, but an unraveling is a good one. That's a nice one. Um, uh, Eric Anderson has said an inquisition of genealogists too. And that's a, a nice one. I like that because we do definitely uh, go with all the questions that we can. We definitely run through. That's a nice one as well. Um, Daphne's mentioned about the Arnon Tafel. They have numbers, and that's right. The Arnon Tafel means that you can represent using numbers where your ancestors are in a, a line, and you can then use that to order and uh, write things in perhaps a book, or you can do a bit more description. So that's a very good point. Um, Fia said a family of genealogists. That's true. We are uh, our own family, aren't we, working together on these different problems? And because I guess uh, we are the only genealogists usually in the family. And so we've made our own new family, haven't we? Our own community, especially here on the Farmer Pass Forum. And when we gather together here and uh, elsewhere, it's great to find that we're um, comrades in arms, aren't we? And we're, we're doing very well together with ourselves. Seems a lot of people have burnt food. <laughs> uh, Linda's burnt food. Colleen, I think, as well. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite a big uh, a big thing so uh, we should definitely perhaps uh, put a feature on the website for some kind of little timer that counts down with an alarm just so that you can get a few records in before anything burns and uh, Lynn Marie has uh, said that family finders that's a good one isn't it family finders that's one name um, Christine said uh, obsession and frustration are their favorites it seems that we're, we're going for the emotional words aren't we and uh, as a description and uh, they're they're um describing perhaps the feelings that we go for we go through when we're doing family history which is a, a big thing and uh, victoria said we have a cracking sense of humor in this group and uh, i think so i think other people would describe it in a different way <laughs> but i'm glad that i'm amongst friends and i'm glad that we're all uh, <laughs> on the same track because that's that's the right thing if you're on different paths it's a little harder but i think we are all uh of the same cloth and the same mind uh allison said forget midnight it's been two o'clock before now that's uh, a proper long genealogy session and that's uh, a big thing and uh cindy uh keeps researching past midnight with a glass of wine in hand and a week later gets a certificate in the post and think why on earth did i order that <laughs> or is it just her well it's definitely not just you because i've definitely thought especially when um you know that wills at the moment in england and wales are one pound fifty each so that's really worth looking you can get the references and find out which ones you need from our government probate death index that's uh, the most comprehensively indexed version of the uh, records that you need to order those wills uh, find the names find the dates find the people that you're looking for and then order those wills it takes i think it's taken about four or five days usually for mine to arrive and they can be full of information. Uh, you might get just the details of administration of, of someone's estate. So you might just get a little bit of detail. But if you get an original will from there, you find everything, all the family, you find the things they owned, the things that they cared about. You might find illegitimate children. You might find all kinds of things. So uh, definitely do that. And um, especially, you know, we've got PDF certificates to order for England and Wales now. Uh, they're a little cheaper and much quicker than uh, having them delivered by post. And then uh, in Scotland, we've got Scotland's people and we've got instant uh, birth, marriage and death for those earlier records. So it's amazing what we can do in one evening when we get started. And uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, and uh, oh, -ho. Um, Amanda said, I'm a glutton for pun, Ishment. <laughs> uh, we, we must, I think somewhere there's a book in this, uh, some genealogist joke book. Uh, I don't think it would sell very well, but I think we'd all contribute. I think it would be very good. Um, the Midnight Oil Burners, that's a good one, isn't it, for a collective? And, uh, and I think we've all done that, haven't we? And um, a fruitcake of genealogists. <laughs> I can see that one. I can definitely see that, Peter. That's one. And, um, and uh, we see Christine likes family as well, family of genealogists. That's good. That's nice. And... Um, 
So we see uh, Anya has adopted a sister from Find My Past Friday. So that's exciting. It's nice to see we're making our uh, connections, and it's all about that. And we're all uh, we've had a, a strange year, haven't we? It's been not something that I think anyone could have predicted. But it's nice that while we've been indoors and when we've not been running around so much, we've had things to do. And we've had some things to come together with, and uh, we've stayed safe. And uh, we've uh, hopefully made some new discoveries along the way because that's exciting too. I would like, hopefully, um, to make sure that we ha always have something to sh talk about and to share when uh, Fire My Past Fridays come around um, with me in the chair. So I think it's a little bit of a challenge, and I don't know if you're up for it. I might post it on the Farmer Pass forum or anything, but I'd like to say um, that we should all make one uh, improvement to our family tree each time before we meet again. It doesn't have to be big. It can be anything. It can be organizing your photographs and maybe uploading a new photograph to your family tree of yourself or anything else. It could be uh, writing down some notes about the things that you remember about ancestors. It could be uh, attaching some of those records or going through some of those hints that you put off for a while, or maybe finding a missing date that you've been looking for for a long time or something like that. If, if you resolve to just do one thing every time, and then we can share what we've done and uh, see what great things we've discovered together. And that will be exciting because I'm sure, I know I've seen some people talk about that they've found some new records and they've gone back two or three generations with something new they found or anything like that. And then maybe that gives us a reason to burn that bin midnight oil a little bit. So that'll be exciting. Um, Eric's wife tells people that he's going ghouling when he visits graveyards with his camera. It's it's always the thing when we try and explain how much, um, whenever we go on holiday, <laughs> we love a good graveyard or something like that. And uh, I think, again, we're all uh, cut from the same cloth and we're, we're always very excited. And I can't get enough of those cemeteries. But uh, yes, to explain to someone on the outside what we're doing and uh, when we say, is there a graveyard near the hotel or something along those lines when we uh, book um, we might get some funny looks, but it's definitely uh, worth it because there are some fantastic ones to take a look at. And I always, wherever I am in the world, will try and find the local cemetery and get a feel for what that uh, culture was like or, or what that place was like by reading some of the gravestones and things like that. I even do it at friends' weddings. I've been at the church or anything, and I've gone for a little walk and spent half the time in the cemetery. So I'm a bit known for that. So I have to be careful. Um, and uh, Beth has said, there's nothing wrong with being a strange family member who likes researching the family history. It's a great reason to escape to the family when you need to visit a graveyard or an archive. Uh, <laughs> that's very true. I uh, said so we're all together. Um, Claire has said a confederation of genealogists. I like that. It's very, very unifying, isn't it? I like confederation. That's good. And uh, Victoria said, satisfaction of genealogists. That's another good one. Satisfaction. Definitely satisfied when we get the answers. Less so when we're waiting for them. Sorry about my camera. Seems to be not quite sure where I am. It seems to be moving back and forth. Um, but uh, that's a strange one. Um, Peter said they ordered a birth certificate and then realized they ordered it before about 20 years ago. And now they've got two copies. That's one of those things, isn't it? That happens a fair bit. I've done that a couple of times. And uh, that's a frustration. It's always good to keep things in a, a sort of a, I've looked at this, but I've discounted it kind of pile just so that you know. I keep things as disregarded hints almost because then you know uh, next time something comes up definitely looked at it that's one thing that i'm trying to work through emma likes an intrigue of genealogists but apparently it's already applied to council members i've known a number of councils in my places that i've lived around britain and i would call them a lot of things i probably wouldn't call them an intrigue um there are lots of great people who work for the council and lots of great councils um, some of the ones i've lived in haven't been so good um, and uh, so, uh, yes, there, there are many, many different descriptive words I could use for certain uh, councils around the country. Um, but uh, let's not get into uh, bin collections nowadays. Um, Sylvia has been uh, researching a branch of the tree for her husband's cousin, which took her back to Devon. All she can say is that she's so glad the records are on Farm My Past. She's back well into the 1750s and it kept her occupied during lockdown. Bought a heap of those wills at £1.50 and the best bit has been all the daughters have been named by their married name. Wow, that's a good one, isn't it? Really useful for a common surname. That's one of the things I am very proud to have some Scottish heritage because those middle names of your mother's maiden surname are an absolute beauty. They're wonderful and they make things so much easier, don't they? Oh, it's great. And uh, it's uh, one another reason why people People should be very proud to be Scottish because they've left some extra clues for us to find our ancestors. 
Uh, Beth loves researching till the early hours of the morning. Nothing wrong with going down rabbit holes, at least 2 or 3 a.m., is there? If, if you're looking for someone to say that there is something wrong, you're definitely in the wrong room because I think we all think it is fantastic. So um, we're, we're always going to be doing that, and I think we're always going to be quite keen. Claire says an exposure of genealogists, so, and that's quite a good one as well, an exposure, because we are looking for all those records and trying to expose the past, aren't we? Um, and, uh, Victoria said we are game changers, and that's uh, another interesting one, game changers. That's interesting. Uh, Anne found a 1610 will yesterday, which listed all the children and grandchildren, best will ever. They are brilliant, aren't they? They're great. I found some really interesting ones um, over uh, the past few months, and uh, the amount of detail they have in there it can be just uh, mind-blowing. It's, it's one of those things that I think people don't use wills enough. There's so much detail, and now that they're very, very cheap, and we don't know how long they're going to be cheap for, definitely get as many as you can um, and keep going. Perhaps put getting the birth, marriage, and death certificates uh, on one side and just get lots and lots of wills and probate documents while we're, we, we can and uh, see if they give you more and more detail, especially they might be able to narrow down the birth, marriage, and death records that you might need and you're not sure which one's which. And we've got some more as well. So Karen has discovered that her second great-great-grandfather was the registrar of marriage of her husband's third great-great-grandfather. <laughs> it is a small world. It really is. It's amazing, these connections. It's uh, it's strange how, especially when we've got people in the same sort of area, how we'll find people who knew each other, people who had um, something in common or anything like that. And there was one uh, strange... I say strange, one interesting little story. It was my grandparents' 70th wedding anniversary only recently. And I had a bit of a plan to uh, celebrate that event because obviously I couldn't go and visit and see them myself because of uh, the restrictions of coronavirus and things. And 70 years is a very big anniversary, so it's very important to celebrate properly. So I wrote to um, every country I could and asked them all to send their well wishes. And so for a period of time, they received gifts from, I think we got to about 40 something countries. All these different things came. They got a, a yurt uh, cloth from Kyrgyzstan. They got um, a card from the, the president of Malta um, and all these different things. And uh, uh, I wanted a, 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 some well wishes from my, my grandmother's hometown in Sicily. And uh, I asked uh, nicely and then discovered that the mayor is my cousin <laughs> so it was one of those connections and it's uh, a distant link but it was the thing that just became instantly much easier and then it became a, a chat and a happy time uh, and uh, that's one of those things that you will find these connections in, in people who are in the same location they stay in the same place you'll definitely see that and it's, it's interesting this small world that we live in uh, as, as we've seen with all of these random cousins that always come out of the woodwork on a Friday so that's it and um, Claire said how can we buy wills and probates is this just for the UK it's um, in England and Wales you'll find um, there's a government site that allows you to buy probate records. You will uh, you can search through their index, which is of use, but uh, their index, uh, their earlier historic index, isn't indexed. It's more of a you search by the page and you go through and you look and you take down the reference number. On Find My Past, the government probate death index is indexed, and so it's much easier to use. So I would use that. Use that, get the reference, and then go to the government website and order it. And it's the same with the uh, birth, marriage and death records for England and Wales. You can't buy these records anywhere else. You can look at the indexes in other places, but you can't buy the records anywhere else. Anyone who tries to sell you a copy of these records will only be going to that place and they'll probably be charging you a little bit more for their time and effort. So always go straight to the source when you want to get those original records. And uh, that will get you to so those wonderful wills and probate and things. We have a huge collection of wills and probate from earlier as well and from different regional places. So we've got a big collection of Devon wills, some wills of famous people. They are very exciting. I like to uh, rummage through and see what other people have offered. Lord Nelson's will, for example, other different things that describe their lives and see how they understood the world and the things that they gave to their relatives and the people that they thought were important. So all of these are 
big and really interesting documents and we have some very very old ones as well going back to the 1700s 1600s 1500s and earlier and so if you have an ancestor that perhaps at this point has property holding property was something that you had to be of a certain class to do but think of yeoman farmers and pe people like that who did have some property and so uh, those are the people that um, you might find in there and so you don't have to be an aristocrat to have something uh, the possible connection between Ellie and myself um, that we've been looking at some wills and things and they're only uh, you know pub landlords and things like that and they have uh, wills and probate that we're looking at and comparing and seeing the family connections in there to see if our families line up and so it's a really big thing for any family historian to use wills and keep going so said Amanda said you know Farron passed have Leicestershire and Litchfield wills lots of ancestral counties are covered a few lines back to the 1500s and 1600s with these um, and uh, it got wise maiden names where there's a will there's a way. That's one of those things that I enjoy a lot. Those puns are fantastic. Um, and uh, Rosie has kindly shared the link to get hold of those original wills and said, use the search uh, function for um, the uh, government probate death index on Pharma Past and then go and get them from that website that Rosie posted. And that is it. And uh, Kalina said, where there's a will, there's a relative. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, and uh, see more of that. Um, I, I don't know the context of this. I've seen that pop up, but I'm going to say he's a good egg is Mika. Well, that's great. Uh, I'm going to take that and I'm going to say, yes, he is. He's all right. He's not bad. Um, but uh, I wouldn't trust him too far. Um, <laughs> Farmer past is all good eggs. That's better. I like that more. I think, uh, yes, we are all um, uh, hopefully lovely people. But I, I'm very blessed to work with such passionate genealogists and people who are so interested. The amount of times um, I've sat with an, a colleague and we've done some family history together or we've tried to have a go at one of these research problems and uh, it's been outside of work hours it's not been something that we've done because we're paid it's something because we really enjoy it and that's what's really exciting and that's why this is uh, really really great to uh, uh, to do and to to get everyone else excited about as well because we all share this wonderful passion uh, beth has said well there's a will as a genealogist which is the most appropriate i think and uh, <laughs> another pun don't egg him on <laughs> well um this uh, at some point i think i know um we're, we're talking about alex preparing a, a guitar and, and playing some tunes one day and i hope we don't end up with a stand-up routine at some other time because uh, we're definitely uh, diverging quite quickly into our different uh, areas of interest um jane has said is it easy to find family in ireland and uh, it's it's interesting it's not so much about being easy and difficult it's about thinking laterally and knowing the records that are available to use. Uh, Irish family history takes a lot of lateral thinking. It takes a bit of a laying out of the records that are available. And some of the records you might be used to in other parts of the world simply aren't there. But there are records that are sort of like it or that are a substitute and can fill that gap. So you have to look for those. So there are some really, really great uh, family history presentations about Irish research on the uh, Fire Past. Uh, Facebook page if you look through the video vault or on our YouTube page and uh, take a look at some of those Brian Donovan is particularly useful and Fiona um, and I think there have been a few others and they really will help be able to help you uh, understand a bit of some of the the vast amount of records that are available to use in Ireland and they uh, really can um, help to break down those brick walls and to get you further and uh, for those of you with Irish research uh, I'm doing some at the moment and it's uh, it's definitely a lot of lateral thinking that gets you there and we have to work through on that so don't give up hope there are definitely records they're just perhaps not the records you're used to so i wouldn't say it's harder or easier it's just different as all kinds of family history are whether you're looking in scotland we're looking in england and wales there are slightly different things to learn and slightly different things to get used to and get your head around so um sometimes it takes a bit of a helping hand and that's what pharma past is here to do with you that's what we're doing and that's why uh, we're always here with these videos and these descriptions i see <laughs> um that uh, a find my past music hall is being suggested we have talked about uh theatrical and musical ancestors and doing a presentation about that and i am going to investigate that 
and uh, we will uh, maybe perhaps add in a bit of music hall and just singing as we go uh, something of quite great interest um i do have to send a, a note to someone about that because i do want to follow that and i think we've got some great ideas and um on you saying the edinburgh festival was stand up for me and guitar from alex i don't know how alex got away with the easy bit i'm, I'm quite frustrated that now i think there might be about six family history jokes in the world and uh, i've heard most of them um but uh, Definitely, I think there needs to be some more. Um, uh, Laurie has said a grove of genealogy is the question of the week. I like that one. That's a good one. That's a nice thing there. Um, and um, then Sue has made a good point for are you looking for your Irish heritage. The Irish Family History Centre live video is every Friday at uh, five o'clock on Facebook. And that's Fiona, who's been on our um, Facebook as well sometimes. And uh, she knows so much about Irish family history. It's really worth taking a look at. Marion said the same thing. Check out Irish family history live at five every Friday on Facebook. So it's a good place to look. And uh, definitely, if you can find someone to ask questions with, go for it at all times. This is one of the the strange things that's happened during lockdown and during all of this that we've been able to speak to each other even though we're all over the world and it's become so much easier to connect with all these people in a way that previously we'd have to wait until there's some kind of conference and we'd have to go and get on a train or a bus or a plane or something else and spend money in a hotel and uh, do all these kind of things and now We've got these Zoom presentations. We've got all kinds of other ways of talking to each other, Facebook, YouTube, and we can ask all those big questions. And I have a little list that I keep by the, my computer. When I think of them, I write them down. And next time I'm in front of someone who knows that kind of thing, I'll just ask them and I'll see what I get. And I might get the answer because, of course, no one knows everything about family history. And um, if you can find someone who's a specialist in that particular way of thinking or that particular type of record, try and get as much information as you can out of them. And Farmer Past is really good in that we've put on so many different themed sessions. I, I really enjoyed our Black Country History one a little while ago. And uh, we've had said newspapers, we've had Ireland, we've had all kinds of things. We're going to be talking about Anzac Day very shortly. And uh, that's going to be very interesting for those of you who, again, we haven't been taught too much about it in school. And uh, it's very interesting to see uh, these kind of things as well as to learn about doing research in these kind of ways. Um, it's it's a really big thing that we can have these different niches. And then, of course, you might not have relatives from this place or this be looking at this kind of record today, but these things stay there forever. So you can go back at any time and you can look at all these videos at your leisure. So if you don't want to know about French records today and we're doing a French records presentation, don't worry. And then if next month you find out you've found a new French ancestor, then you can go straight to that video, for example. So there's a wonderful benefit to having this interactive library that you've got. So it's a great thing. And uh, we have a few here. So um, some more stuff here. Andrew said, speaking of showbiz, they have a distant cousin who had a bareback horse riding act. The papers are full of ads and reviews all over the British Isles. That's exactly the kind of thing that uh, uh, we're looking at, this theatrical thing. So it would definitely be of interest, I think, doing this. And uh, I need to speak to uh, the chap I've got in mind because I know he'd love to do it as well. And he's he's quite keen on singing as well. So we might end up with some uh, some music hall songs. So I I... I don't know how that presentation might go, but I think that might be quite a one to watch. I think that might be exciting. And um, Sylvia has given some talks herself via Zoom most recently to the Botany Bay Family History Society. So that's a, a, an interesting one. There's uh, definitely lots and lots of um, presentations going on, family history societies around the world. A lot of people who uh, have ancestors from a different country join the local family history society in their point of origin because those are the people that know about that area and now they don't have to be in that place to go and meet and attend at those meetings and do things like that so it's a great um democratizer this uh thing that we've got now with zoom and everything else so it is a very very uh, useful tool that we've all now had to become very useful used to and uh, it, hopefully it doesn't go away hopefully you know now we're all going outside and we've got haircuts and all kinds of things then uh, we still get to keep this staying together and being with each other because i think that's something that we uh, have done a lot of very useful things and uh, and christine has said very nice people and helpful but not helped you yet so get on the find my past forum and uh, ask questions of course it's there on from you can get there from the facebook page uh, there's plenty of people who want to help you and of course always you can ask questions here of any of our experts 
uh, we're hopefully making the session that we talked about on the second Wednesday of every month. We're going to do that monthly Q&A session with me. So keep your questions stored for that. Uh, if I don't know it, I can definitely go and have a look around and try and find someone that does uh, or give you a nudge in the right direction. And then, of course, you can always ask on a Friday as well. You can try and see what happens there. So um, don't give up hope there as well. If you've got questions, always bring them out, always ask, and hopefully someone will be able to help you. Sometimes it, it's a matter of not being able to see the wood for the trees or the family trees even. Uh, when you look at a problem and it's the answer staring you right there in the face, but you just can't see it because you've looked at so many records, you just have a bit of tunnel vision. And that's happened to me so many times that I've lost count. And it takes someone else to just look at it and go, oh, yeah, there it is. It happens with transcription all the time. You'll look at something and you won't be able to read it at all. And someone will just look at it and straight away tell you exactly what it was. And you couldn't see anything. And you can do the same for them. It's just one of those strange little quirks of the human brain, I think, that we just never quite um, can, can solve everything. But when we uh, get to it and we work together, we can do lots and lots of things. And uh, Sylvia is saying here, an extra pair of eyes can really help. And uh, Christian is saying that they're still in lockdown in Canada. We're, we're still there in, in Britain. And I think in lots of places, we're still um, keeping ourselves safe. So uh, uh, there's definitely a lot more to do in terms of genealogy indoors. And uh, that's the great thing about websites and things where we can do uh, plenty of things still inside our own homes where we don't have to worry about uh, joining together in large groups or anything like that. So I see we're, we're coming. We've got about 10 minutes left. And I see lots of people uh, talking to each other. And that's uh, exciting as well. And uh, I see uh, all kinds of different comments and things. I'd like to ask Alex to see, as uh, he um, has been keeping an eye on these comments and seeing everything. We mentioned in that question of the week, all those different wonderful descriptions that you gave of a, a, a collective noun for genealogists. If Alex can remember, and I'm going to ask you, the top five. If you can remember the top five, Alex, and post them as a comment, then we'll put them out and we're going to try and do a final vote and see what we can do. And what we'll do is we'll get Alex to get from a top five and then we'll get to a, a top two or three and then we'll see if we can find a, a, a so say, find my past Friday's uh, name for a collection of genealogists and uh, see if we can solve this once and for all. So let's see what he comes back with. But uh, I think you've all been really, really good with your suggestions. They've been really, really interesting. And I think you've all been very witty. And that's what I like. You've been witty. You've been clever. You've been wonderful. And who can ask for anything more than that? Because those are the kind of people that I like to hang around with. And you are definitely that. I would definitely enjoy hanging around with all of you. And I hope at some point in the future we all can. I'm sure we'll have some kind of fine mass gathering at some event or other where we can really, really uh, get talking about family history and we can do everything that we need to. And uh, I'm sure that those events are only just around the corner and they'll start again at some point in the future. So um, Alex has said frustration is number one. So that's one, so frustration. But if we uh, wait and we'll see if we can get all five, and that would be good. Um, Robert's only just found these live videos. Uh, they wish you knew about them before. Very enjoyable and informative. Well, you're welcome from now on, Robert, and definitely read back and read the titles and see what's there and see if there are other topics that interest you and you can listen to those at your leisure. So uh, definitely um, welcome to, to Find My Past Fridays and welcome to the Find My Past From Home experience. And we hope to see you again and we definitely uh, enjoy a chat so you can... Uh, uh, make sure that uh, any questions you have, you can uh, have a, a, an answer to. And of course, everyone who's talking um, and uh, commenting in these uh, descriptions and in the comments there, uh, they're all lovely people too. And so you'll definitely find some new friends and you're amongst people who share that same hobby, that same inspiration. And uh, that's a great place to be. So uh, we see uh, Bev has said an extra pair of eyes solved a brick wall. And um, and uh, there we go. Anya said, I'm sure Top of the Pops did it in reverse order. I think, and uh, Caroline said, they're on every Friday. Yes, uh, our live uh, Find My Past Friday is at four o'clock every Friday. And uh, we also have presentations through the week on different topics. But on the Fridays where we just gather and we have a bit of a chat, it's a bit more free from, uh, you can talk about what you want. And uh, it always goes in strange, different, interesting directions. And we talk about all those new records that are released as well. So uh, it's a great chance to find out a bit more about what they are and what's going on. It seems like um, rather than a vote, um, Alex has just picked the 
pick the winner, <laughs> which is is fine. Oh, there we go. Oh, I know, no, he's here. So, <laughs> um, so the other top ones are enthusiasm, gaggle, archive, and forest. Okay, so we've got those five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say them all out loud, and then uh, we're going to say you can use your thumbs up, use your like. And um, then Alex is going to watch and we're going to see which one is the most popular and see what we can do. So we're going to start with the first one. So if you give us a, um, a thumbs up, if you like it, and so you don't have to just vote for one, but we'll see which one gets the most. So the first one, a frustration of genealogists. Do you think that would be the collective term? A frustration of genealogists. How is that one going? A frustration of genealogists. That's quite a good one. And we definitely feel that frustration. Okay, so the second one, an enthusiasm of genealogists. An enthusiasm of genealogists. That's an interesting one. That is a good one. Enthusiasm of genealogists. Okay, a gaggle of genealogists. A gaggle of genealogists, just like the geese. And of course, we do like a gander at some good records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you get the presenters you deserve, my friends. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, an archive of genealogists, an archive of genealogists. So, what do you think? That's a good term for a description of genealogists. An archive of genealogists. A forest of genealogists. A forest of genealogists. That's another one. Remember, you don't have to vote once. So you go give it a thumbs up if you like it. A forest of genealogists. And then there's one more that's been thrown in. And so I think we have to use that one as well. Um, a obsession of genealogists. Anyone thinks an obsession of genealogists is the one. So give your thumbs up and see what we get, see what's coming through. An obsession of genealogists. There we go. So with all of those... Alex, hopefully, will be able to see which ones are popular, maybe even pick out the two most popular, and we'll do that once more time and see what happens. Um, and while we're doing that, I see Jade saying that she's new. Welcome, Jade, as well. It's nice to see new people. This happens all the way through the week. Uh, Friday's at four for our, our informal chat, but then there are these wonderful presentations going on with all kinds of different topics all the way through the week as well. So keep an eye on our Facebook page, keep an eye on our Facebook group, and you'll find more. There are lots of us. So let's see what's going on. I see Farmer um, Past Fridays, we should be a giggle of genealogists. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is becoming a thing, isn't it? Every time um, we uh, gather together, um, there's always something that goes on, and uh, I, I like it a lot. I think you people are um, keeping me sane uh, in, in lockdown, and uh, I hope that that uh, rubs off, and I hope we're all keeping each other uh, sane. Um, but uh, I definitely see um, that uh, the explanation for both. So obsession and frustration are both pretty close, it seems. Those are the two. So let's let's do the same thing again and see which one wins. So this is the final one. So if you want to pick, so Fee said obsession, George has said frustration. I think it sounds like it might be even, but if you can just choose one now this time, I'm going to say them both, and that's just going to keep an eye. It'll be a nice rounding off. We'll see which one is it. So um, so uh, here we go. So uh, you can comment as well, I think, obsession or frustration, if you find it easy and do the thumbs up. But here we go. So we're going to try. So first of all, an obsession of genealogists. Do you think that's a good name for a group of genealogists? An obsession of genealogists. A collection of uh, genealogists would be called a obsession of genealogists. So see how that one's gone. Is that all right? Okay. Now let's try the next one. Okay. So a frustration of genealogists. If you think a frustration is the term that we should use, because we definitely, I think both of those are really, really appropriate. But yes, a frustration of genealogists. So there we go. So let's round that off and see. It seems, wow, I see a lot of people commenting uh, with, with one particular one. And uh, let's see um, if Alex, when you can see these likes and thumbs up, see if he's got any kind of uh, idea that uh, perhaps it could be one or the other. And uh, let's see uh, what he comes back with. But we think we may have a winner. We may have, uh, perhaps even if it's only a far my past term, I think we've definitely got a new word that we can use. And uh, so Roxana said, a frustrated obsession it is. And that's very true. And uh, yes, we definitely have uh, hopefully solved the mystery today. And I like that Karen said, does anyone else jump straight into their research right after Find My Past Fridays? And uh, I definitely um, have done that a few times, but, uh, especially when there are new records that are of interest. I know said Sylvia has already said that she's got some great new things to pursue this week. And a couple of others have said too. So um, it's great to see you um, find 
finding new things, even just as we describe them. And Anya said, how are we related to Miko of genealogists? So I, I feel that my family tree is, is becoming very, very large, and it feels like this is becoming just a family reunion rather than a, a presentation. But uh, yes, um, so it looks like Obsession may have just about won. So that's it. So we've, we've got a resolution, and we've, we've found out that a collective noun for genealogists, everyone uh, has uh, said here on Pharma Past, uh, would be an obsession of genealogists. So of course, we we don't make the rules and genealogist is, genealogy is all about interpretation. So if you uh, want to interpret things in a different way, then feel free. We, uh, we enjoy just the experience and the investigation. So we've had our own little investigation and it sounds like obsession has come out on top. So we're all our own little obsession of genealogists here. And I like that a lot. So uh, thank you very much for joining. And so that's a nice way to round it off. Seems everyone's now going to look for a connection to Mika. Well, <laughs> let me know how you get on. And I'm sure it's probably not the last uh, re relative that I'm going to find today. So uh, I'm sure there'll be more over the coming months and years that will appear. So it's great to see you cousins. And uh, I think, of course, we're all cousins if we go back far enough. And that's what I like. So greetings and farewell, cousins. And uh, I do hope to talk to you again soon. It's been lovely to share some time with you. It's been uh, great over all of these weeks, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in about a month's time. Uh, we do another question and answers, and I'll be back for another Find My Past Friday. So take a look at those new records. Enjoy searching all the records that we have. Come back and tell us all the wonderful things that you've found, whether in these records or in general. Then we'll talk again, perhaps on the Find My Past Forum or perhaps here, about all the wonderful things that we find and all the progress that we're making, or even the things that we're stuck on and that we need a bit of help, because there are so many people that are so willing to help and enjoy it. So don't feel shy about asking those questions. Thank you very much to Alex for uh, moderating these comments and being there. And he's done very well with our choosing a name. And uh, we'd love to see you again. So definitely stay safe and uh, enjoy what may be sunshine wherever you are in the world. And uh, I know that we're getting towards summer or winter if you're in uh, the uh, Australia, New Zealand area. But uh, of course, you have a much more pleasant winter. So uh, I'm still a little jealous. But uh, thanks very much for coming. And I hope to see you again very, very soon. Indeed. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.